Probably the coolest thing to come out of uh, the genetic results is how small the human population probably was. Uh, if you go back to around 70 to 80,000 years ago, we were very nearly extinct. Probably the, the total number of people living in the world at that time, and again, we were still all living in Africa, could have fit into a small symphony hall, around 2,000 people, maybe even less. And so we, we nearly went extinct, and this was probably due to climate shifts that were occurring around that time. We were in the midst of the last ice age. Things really started to get bad between 70 and 80,000 years ago. There was a massive volcanic eruption in Sumatra, known as Mount Toba, that erupted around 74,000 years ago. The combination of these factors probably drove the human population very close to extinction. And we came back from that, and we figured out a way to survive these horrible climatic conditions. And that probably primed the pump, if you will, to allow us to go out and explore the rest of the world and actually make proper forays into the part of Asia, off into Europe, Southeast Asia, Australia, and ultimately into the Americas between 15 and 20,000 years ago. So the evidence is that we started to leave between 50 and 60,000 years ago following a, a coastal route along the south coast of Asia beach combing our way along, living on you know, marine resources, shellfish, probably doing a little bit of fish trapping. Um, we rapidly made it down to Southeast Asia, to Australia by around 50,000 years ago when humans show up in the fossil record there. Um, there was a later migration between 45 and 50,000 years ago, according to our data, that came via an inland route, crossed the Sahara at a point when the Sahara was actually a very nice place to live. Every 20,000 years or so, due to fluctuations, the way the Earth precesses in its orbit, the way it rotates, and this causes shifts in the way the monsoon rains fall in Africa, every 20,000 years or so, the Sahara is actually a pretty nice place. And it was an extension of the grasslands of East Africa around 50,000 years ago, and this allowed people to slowly move up into northern Africa, out into the Middle East, and that led them on their way to the rest of the world. So it's, it's really kind of these, these grand sweeping Paleolithic migratory routes that we're following, but also very specific details. I mean, all the way up to the, the present day nearly, historical events. Um, we published a paper about a month ago in the American Journal of Human Genetics showing that the Christian population of Lebanon is carrying genetic markers that tie them to the Crusaders from Western Europe who came over only about 800, 900 years ago. And so these are events that we knew about from the historical record, hadn't seen a genetic trail prior to this because we didn't, didn't have enough samples. But uh, now we're seeing it, you know, as we increase the sample size. Everything from the very earliest days of our species up to very recent events. What underpins uh, the work we're doing, the scientific work, is the idea that DNA changes over time at a regular rate. Um, so DNA is a very long linear molecule. It's a coded molecule. There are four subunits, so think of it as Morse code, but with four different possibilities rather than just dots and dashes. And it's the sequence of these subunits that is basically a blueprint to make another version of you. And if you choose to have kids, as your parents did, you have to copy this very long molecule or document to pass it on to them. And when you're copying it, because it is so very long, there are billions of these subunits, occasionally you're going to make a mistake, a typo. So imagine copying the longest text you can think of, war and peace, but multiply it by 100. And you're copying it by hand, staying up late at night, and you're very, very careful, but occasionally you're going to make a typo, substitute an I for an E, or in the case of DNA, a C for a G or an A for a T. These don't happen very often at the genetic level. They're called mutations when they do occur, and they occur at a rate of around 50 per genome per generation. So not very often, 50 out of the billions of subunits we have. But when they happen, and they get passed on through the generations, they become markers of descent, and that's how we place people into these lineages. So again, if you share one of these markers with someone, you share an ancestor, the person who first had that change in their DNA. Now, because we know the rate at which they occur, by looking at the number of changes that have accumulated on a lineage, we can estimate the age of that lineage. And by comparing the distribution of the lineage to populations all over the world, seeing which populations it's found in and which, population, which populations it's not found in, indigenous groups, people who've lived in the same place for a long period of time, give us an insight into their ancestors' genetic patterns. By looking at the distribution in those groups all over the world, we can actually map where it originated and how it spread around the planet.